Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 134 of The Nerd Out. I'm Lisa. I'm Mitzi P. We're girls and we nerd out. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, The Nerd Out. You can email us, info at The Nerd Out. Uh, we have a website, nerdout.com. And as you may have figured out, we are available on Word to Your Mama. And the handle for that, in case anyone wants to follow it, and you should if you are not already, is at W-T-Y-M-A-M-A, Word to Your Mama. See. Um... Yes, exciting news. If you didn't listen to the first episode of the year, it's under the Word to Your Mama umbrella. And also we have new exciting, another set of exciting news. Word to Your Mama is now officially a part of the Latina Podcasters Network. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So that means the nerd out is part of that because half of the thing is Latina, Latin, Latinx, Latine, whatever you want to say. So, yeah. So, you know. Yay. I, congratulations. Thank and you. I'm honored that you could drag me along with you. I didn't drag you nothing. You, you're you with me willingly. <laughs> it's it's a thing. And I love that we can, you know, spread the word uh, of the, the gospel of the nerd out, if you will. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and another thing. T.I., do you remember, like, we have two, um, let's call them uh, listeners, supporters of the Nerd Out. We have... Uh, Just two? I, well, well, no. We have two that we always hear, and that always contribute since yes. day one. That's Aguilar. Yes. The of, the, of the Eagles. And then, remember the first time I was like, is it Donna or Donia? Because it was only one N. Donna Gomez. She's been there since jump. She would always respond, like put, put you know, um, comments on our Facebook posts and stuff like that. And she would like chime in. Well, guess what? She has what? followed us over to Word to Your Mama. And she said how excited she was that the nerd out is back over here. Like it's back. And that's also part of the Word to Your Mama. So much so that she has become a patron on Patreon at the I'm down level, which means she gets a couple of things. Which, but one of them is a shout out on an episode of Word to Your Mama. But I was like, she can't just be on just whatever episode of Word to Your Mama. She yeah. has to be shouted out on the nerd out. Yeah. Yeah. This is amazing. Yay. Thank She's you so the best. Much. Yeah. I'm so excited. I feel I I just like to thank the Academy. <laughs> um, I feel like this is so exciting. My wildest dreams coming true. <laughs> For real. For real. It's just awesome that, you know, I don't know how many people stuck around with the nerd out because we've been on for a long time. It was like more like a hobby situation. We weren't trying to monetize. We were, it was just like, you know, and we were sporadic. That was our thing. The running theme, the running joke was that we we're like, oh, we'll try to do it once a week. We'll try to do it twice a week. We'll try to do it once a month. <laughs> and they have like these big gaps and then, you know, a bunch of stuff happened. But we're back. And, you know, I saw that she would like kind of comment and listen and like things on Worry Cheer Mama. And I was like, because we mentioned you know, when I started doing this and I was like, oh man, she's awesome. She's dope. And then I saw her post that she was excited about the nerd out. And then I saw recently that she was a patron. And I was like, it's on and popping for Donna, not Donia, Donna Gomez. <laughs> Donna Gomez. You are awesome. Thank you so much. You are showing up every other fan out there. So thank you. <laughs> exactly. This is how you fan people. Yes. A true, true nerd. The nerd out fan. A yes, true yes, nerd. Yes. A true nerd. Um, okay. So T.I., let's start it off. Um, happy Women's History Month. Wow. Thank again. I'd just like to thank the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> happy Women's History Month to you too. Thank you. Thank you. Because you're a woman. And I'm I a am. Woman. And We're you women. are. Mm -hmm. And so are a lot of people who are listening. So, hey, hey, happy Women's History Month to you, women, or also to men, because we are inclusive. <laughs> no, fuck the men. It's uh, okay. women's fuck history. Them. They get everything. We That's This true. is our month, our history, <laughs> our history, our month. Um, it's like it's like when um, I was a kid and I would ask my mom why there wasn't a children's day. And she said, because every day is children's day. Facts. As a mom, I can I can. 
Concur. I can concur. <laughs> um, okay, let's 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 not fret or frown. Let's keep yeah. it moving. Let's yeah. talk about TV. Ti, what have we been doing? I, I, digesting, ingesting, watching. I, I, you know, I haven't been watching a ton because I've been really into a couple of things. The first thing that I really have been blown away by, and it's my favorite thing I've watched in a long time, is Station Eleven mm. on HBO. Mm. It is. Have you seen this? No, but uh, I. It's on my list. People that I I um, trust their taste mm-hmm. are like, whoa. Yeah, you can't. And this is not a half asser one. Like it's not a you know survivor or something that's like on in the background. This is like you a, gotta pay a, attention. A, yeah, yeah. It is. Like, I just, I almost, there just really almost aren't words to describe it. Mm. It's not that it's, it's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it is so ambitious. Mm. It is so like heartbreakingly sweet and sad and beautiful. Uh. And like the music is wonderful. There is um, one of the actors in particular, one of the roles in particular is Kristen and there's younger Kristen and older Kristen. The woman, the women who play younger and older are both so fucking good. Mm. And like, is she the one that's in the poster? Like the image yeah, of the show? Yeah. Uh huh. She was on and you, right? First season of you. Yes, yes. 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 I knew that I, I was trying to figure it out. That's totally it. She is, um, I, I don't know. There's something, it's very like magical realism. Mm. It's very like, there are moments of surrealness. It's like you cover like all sorts of feelings, every episode, half the time I'm crying. Mm. And surprisingly enough, Ranger Ted is like right there with me. Was he, was he, did he share, was he chopping He onions? did not, he did not shed a tear, but he has loved it as much as me, which wow. is surprising because he is, in, not only is he really fussy, but he's real fussy about sci-fi and fantasy and stuff. Mm. And this is like, you know, it's more like magical realism. Like it's real, but it's a little off. It is technically <laughs> sci-fi. Um, but it is, yeah, it's just, it's so good. We have been putting off watching the finale for a week and a half because we don't want it to be over. Wow. That's a bold statement. That's a big statement. And we want to be able to have the appropriate amount of time to like, like it can't be like rushed on like a Wednesday. No, it's got, it's got to be like a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon or something where we can just really like enjoy it. And pro- have time to process it completely, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. And not like go to bed and then lay there with your eyes open. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Well, I can't wait to watch it I, because I, I know I knew tears were involved. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can't fit it in right now. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm behind yeah. on TV watching and it's kind of killing me. So mm-hmm. I was like, that's going to be a, a reward for later. But I'm excited yeah. to know that you like it. So that gives me people from different parts of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? That kind of, it kind of across the board, like things that you would like, my other homeboy, he wouldn't like. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you guys both are over here, but it's like blanket statement. Everyone like loves yeah. it. Everyone says that. It's like emotional, beautifully yeah, sad. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> lyrical and beautiful and like every emotion. And uh, one thing that made me really happy, the reason that I kind of picked it up in the first place is when the finale aired a bunch of people, like I am never on Facebook, sorry. Um, but like I, for some reason was randomly on Facebook and people were like, holy shit, that finale like delivered. And I was like, oh, a finale that delivered you say. Yeah. That's, so, that's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. And they were like, the finale was perfect. And I was like, okay, I'm down with a with a perfect finale. Like, let's see what happens. So we do have one more episode. I don't know when we're gonna watch it. That's exciting. So <sighs> yeah. we'll go in into in depth to uh, of it when I watch it. So hopefully in the next month or so. Uh, yeah. Because what what is, how many episodes? Uh, like nine. Yeah, I got I got the weekend. most of them are, are they're around an hour. I think some of them might have been like an hour and a half. Yeah, a weekend. Yeah. You know what would be Ugh. perfect? A weekend would happen where my surfing the crimson wave happens to land on a weekend. That's like the perfect yeah. storm, yeah. right? No, it really is. <laughs> it really like, is. 
You're like, like, I got my mite all. I got like my hot water bottle and I got like some snacks and I'm just going to lay here. My and tissue like, box. Yeah. It's just going to roll over me. Yeah, yeah. That's what you need. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Come on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Come on. Big bucks. No whammies. <laughs> no whammies. No whammies. Okay. What else are you watching? Okay. The other thing that we have been watching that we have also, also another surprising, um, both Lisa and Ranger Ted approved is Peacekeeper. <laughs> Mm. Also on HBO, which I think a lot of people have heard about because there's a lot of buzz about it. It, It's kind of like The Boys, which I loved, but it's a little lighter. Like The Boys is is about as dark as it gets. Yeah. There's like dolphin death, sexual (laughs) assault, the whole nine. Whereas whereas, um, Peacekeeper is a little lighter. And um, I am shocked and amazed at what a great actor John Cena is in this. He is remarkable. And he has like a, you know, he's like kind of a shitty superhero. And he has his um, little superhero mascot, an eagle named Eagly, who steals every scene. Thank you. And um, yeah, highly recommend. I think it probably helps if you watched the most recent Suicide Squad that was yeah. directed by James Gunn. Because this is also James Gunn and kind of builds off of that. But Ted didn't see Suicide Squads and he enjoyed it very much. Oh, we nice. adored. I haven't watched it yet, mm-hmm. but that's another thing that's on my list. But I do listen religiously to Fat Man Beyond, with Kevin yep. Smith and Mark yep. Bernadine. And they broke it down and they were talking about it. And it was maybe kind of spoilerish, but I don't I won't remember when I watch it. And I was like, OK. I'm down. I'm really down now because I did watch The Last Suicide and I thought he was awesome. And when I heard they were going to make a show, a spinoff, I was like, that makes plenty sense. Yeah. But when the, when when Kevin and Mark kind of talked about the ending or something big that happens at the ending, and I won't say it, but like, you know, they said, oh, wow, this is kind of like a real representation of America and what he had to deal with and you know, that dynamic of, you know, your parentals and stuff. And, and I was like, wow, that's deeper than I thought. And I was like, I like that there was that layer. They also said that for season two, Tim Gunn's going to direct all of them. Oh, that's great. I'm down for that. I would say, yeah, like one of the things, there was a big kerfuffle online. This, I saw this and that, that was kind of when I was like, maybe I need to watch this. <laughs> and, um, cause a lot of the like, you know, Reddit bros were real unhappy that, um, that he, like it, he is just sort of matter of factly bisexual, this character. Oh, and, um, like there's hints about That's it all awesome. the time. And then like, he says something and people online, like flipped their computers over and were like, <laughs> what? He's a red blooded male. But it's like, no, peacekeeper is, um, peacekeeper is peacekeeper. He just totally wants to like, fuck. Yeah. Like, he doesn't give a shit who it is. <laughs> and yeah. So people got real upset about that, but they, I, I love that I, even more. I know. And um, and people were really mad at James Gunn and they were like, how could you make John Cena be bisexual? And he was like, it was John Cena's idea. Oh, in your face. In your face. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that. I love tricking these bros. I love I love that shit. Yeah. And 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 yeah, John Cena was like, this guy's like an he doesn't have any hang ups about that. He's like an eagle equal opportunity and eagle opportunity. Um, he's like an eagle opportunity <laughs> lover and fighter. Like yeah. he doesn't care. Love that. And yeah. also, did we talk about this already? He's like fluent in like Mandarin. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. I can't even tell you the, why I was on a YouTube deep dive. <laughs> and then John, when Cena comes up and he's like saying like being mod he's like oh no it's not that good but he's speaking in mandarin they're like oh my god you're like it's like subtitles they're like it's amazing and he's like oh yeah cha, cha, cha. and i was like what <laughs> wow yeah, yeah random. look it up would yes. not have expected that he did he filmed something over there went something over there i don't know he tells a story and i was just like wow there's there's dimensions to this guy like he looks like the total you know i'm i'm, I'm excited to watch that for sure yeah, he's like Uber bro, but he's not. But he's not. Just yeah. for jokes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Makes you question <laughs> bros you question. out there. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Amazing. What about you? What are you watching? Okay, so uh, last Sunday, 
uh, was Euphoria Finale. Okay. Still haven't watched that. Yeah, it, it's stressful, dude. It is so stressful. I, me and my friends that watch it, we were like stressed out before the finale, and we were just, I was just like, so I don't, I took, I took a picture, but you can't really see me. I'm, ho- I'm in my room with my computer under a blanket, <laughs> holding the supernatural bear's bear. His name is Barry. He's this big, like kind of fat bear, and I'm. That's how stressed out I am. I need a stress buddy. And I'm I'm watching this, and I was just like, this, you know, say what you will. It's Euphoria this season is is kind of off the rails a little bit, but it's when it's good, it's good. Like when the acting is good, there's some crazy, amazing acting, and there's a lot of tears and just uh just a lot of dams, 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 and I'm I, I love it. And people are like, oh, are you excited? There's going to be a season three, and I was like, no, not at all. Because I'm stressed, I don't need any more stress. But someone on the to, and also you you had to have watched it. If you were watching it, you had to watch. I had to I have to watch it in earlier in the night because if I I watched it one time at late at night and it fucked me up or I was just like wired and stressed out. Uh-huh. And then so I have to also have to watch it as soon as I can because we get the East Coast feed at six because people are nuts. Oh They're yeah, full blown spoiling it. Yeah. Making memes about what happened. And I was like, I got to watch. I got to stay off of it. And da, da, da. And um, people were the best things, like, you know, the best memes. But also people are like, everyone's in an abusive relationship with euphoria. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's it. That is it. And just like an abusive relationship, I don't want a season three. But season three is coming or whatever season it is. And I'm going to watch it. I'm going to hit. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. And I'm just going to be stressed and upset and everything, but I'm going to take it. And there's, because I, like I was telling my friend, just like I hate watched the new, the latest Sex in the City. And just like that, it was awful. It was painful and it was awful. But if I'm going to do it with that, I'm going to do it with Euphoria. Because that's what happens. I'm trying to understand. Should I watch Euphoria? <laughs> no. <laughs> really? No. No. Okay. Save okay. yourself. Okay. Same. okay. It, it's it's amazing, but don't do it. You don't. You have there's you have a lot of things to catch up on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're right. later. Maybe later. Because Zend- Zendaya, like her, this you're just like okay, give her the Emmy because she, her, I was bawling this one episode just by her acting. I was like, she is acting, mm-hmm. all capitals. <laughs> there's no way. Like holy fucking shit. That's her real snot. There has to be her real snot. They didn't shoot up some shit that looked like snot. That's her. And I'll just like, forget about it. So there's <laughs> moments and there's other actor, you know, actors in there. They're just like, wow, how are you doing that right now? That's amazing. So no, nah, don't do it to okay. yourself right now. Okay. Do it to yourself later. The latest thing, the latest obsession. Are you watching The Gilded Age? I haven't, but I Ooh. knew that you would be and I figured you could Ooh. tell me. Because you know me, if, for I those know, who are love, new, a period you, piece. I have no idea why. Piece. I don't relate to these motherfuckers, but I love it. So I was like, I wasn't sure because uh, Cynthia Nixon's in it. And it's about New York, you know, old money versus new money. And I was like, I wasn't sure. And I was like, I don't. And it's Homeboy who did. Um, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. So I was like, oh, shit. There's too many things calling me. And I was like, let me see what anyone thinks. So um, our friend Hannah from Super Cute, her yeah. and her man are just like tweeting. They're like, ooh, the side eye, the <laughs> this and that. And I was like, the pettiness. I was like, okay, I'm in. And then I got into it and it just, it calms me down and I love it. And I love the costumes and um, they just got renewed for a second season. I'm all about it. Uh, yeah, I suggest. If you like Downton Abbey. Yeah. Yes, you're going to love okay. this. You're going to okay. love this. But some people couldn't do it because Cynthia Nixon took them out. Uh, yeah, okay. I um, I I stopped watching Downton Abbey the episode before something really oh. terrible happens mm. because I was like, I can't go on without that character. So I stopped. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Gilded Age, uh, yeah, uh, I recommend... Um, and have you, st- uh, this is all HBO Max. Guys. Yeah. HBO's like, crushing it right they now. They are crushing. I'm not never getting rid of that. Um, 
So another HBO Max thing that happens on Sundays uh, is Somebody Somewhere with Bridget Everett. Don't know her. Don't know her. Okay. So Bridget Everett, you know her. You know her. She's like kind of a crass comedian. She's like with Amy Schumer, like that crew, they're friends. Um, And she sings and she does crass things. Anyways, um, it's kind of loosely based on her life. They film in like in the outskirts, like rural outskirts of Chicago. And it's just this like quiet, just little quiet thing that's, it's like, it's a dramedy, but it's just this quiet little show. And I don't know why I just love it. It like, okay. It's like 30 minutes or so. And it just, it's, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. I like it's a like, 30 minute show. That's great for weeknights. Cause it's like work late, work out, cook food. Don't have like, you know, time to watch a movie. So 30 minutes, one or two of those is great. Yeah. And it's just about like, it just starts off, I guess it's like her life in the aftermath of she has two sisters and one of them she was really close with. I guess finally she dies. I think she had cancer or something. And she's back back at home in this rural town where she went to high school and, you know, dealing with that and dealing with parents and, you know, and finding her way in this small little rinky dink town and dealing with depression in a different way and, and grief. And it just kind of like, I don't know, it's just this quiet little thing. And I think you will enjoy it. So if anyone okay. out there is watching somebody somewhere, um, let us know. Um, and then I also wanted, to, because this is the nerd out and we are who we are, um, I wanted to talk about what's up next for Star Wars series. Did we talk about the Boba Fett finale? No, because uh, I, that we, we recorded in January. Okay. Thoughts on the finale? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of where I was. All right. <laughs> I still wish the um, the mods would have been murdered or minimum their bright ass vehicles would have been destroyed. Yeah. Um, and then I, we were like making fun of homeboy when he did that twisty turn to shoot. And then, <laughs> you know, Kevin Smith and Mark Bernadine reminded us they're like, that didn't bother me. That's uh, Rodriguez. That's his move. It's in all his movies. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, someone I guess that's... so spins, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess so." But no. Um, okay, so uh, next up, May twenty fifth <gasps> is Obi Wan Kenobi. And this, who is starring in this? Um, a train spotting guy. <laughs> so you and McGregor is in this? Yes. Yes. Are they like? Okay, I, I don't even need to know. I'm in, uh, in. so I don't know why I'm asking questions. Yeah, you're yes, in. Yes, and also Obi Wan Kenobi. And also, I believe Christian Hayden is in it as, you know, Anakin, Brave or something man. like that. <laughs> you, exactly. He's like, I need this money. I need this cheddar. I need this bag. I need a redemption. Um, and then next up, I didn't watch uh, the Bad Batch, which I heard is really good. I think that's the animated. Yeah. So Are they doing a, a live version of it? No, no. The, I okay, think it's the okay. animated oh, season, season two. two of the yeah. animated. Yeah, I didn't watch that either, but I did hear really good things. I tell you what, I am a I'm a terrible nerd because I totally bring my animated bias to many things. <laughs> and I just like so many people are always like, oh, you got to watch this great series. And it's animated. And I'm like, OK. And I give it a chance. And after a couple of episodes, I'm all no. It's yeah. not it. Yeah, I can only do a, a few for sure. It has to be like next level for me to really like yeah, it. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, the next one after that is Andor. Is Andor. Uh, so that's coming out late summer. Then The Mandalorian, late 2022. Um, and that's what we got so far in, on 2022. And then um, the... Osoka TV is in pre-production. Series is in pre-production. Um, there's a Lando TV series that's in development. The Rogue Squadron is in development. Um, yeah, so that that's what we. There's a Kevin Feige Star Wars movie to be determined, and a a, a Taika White Waititi Star Wars movie. Huh. Okay. Um, interesting. 
Yeah, so that's what we got. We got a lot of stuff coming up. They got us. They got us on lock on the Disney Plus. So yeah. HBO Max and Disney Plus. Yeah, not going anywhere. No, we, that, they got us. They got um, me. <laughs> okay, movies. What are we talking about? Um, We have been into Oscar movies. See. Trying trying to get caught up. I think that when we last talked, we might have talked about Power of the Dog, if we did or if we didn't. Um, I really, I liked it way more than I thought that I would, especially, like, now that I've had a month to think about it. I normally really dislike, like, Jane Campion, Jane Campion-style movies, like, seems, feels very, like, pretentious and boring and whatever. I absolutely hated, what was that one that took place in the New Zealand jungle with Harvey Keitel full frontal, something about a piano? No. Hated that movie so much. <laughs> hated it. With the passion of a thousand fiery suns. So I was like, ugh, power of the dog. But I loved it. Thought it was great. Um, we also watched Belfast. Ooh. Which I is. I watch that. Yeah, Kenneth Branagh one. Where did you which, watch it on? Um, you rented it? Yeah, I think we rented it. It's not cheap. It's like 20 bucks. It's mm. still a lot cheaper than going to the movies for two people. Yeah, that's real. Um, and I kept trying to figure out who is this lead woman on in this movie. And um, somebody finally pointed out to me, it's the woman who's the lead in Outlander. Oh, I didn't watch that. Okay, well, you should. She <laughs> was great. Um, so really enjoyed that. It had Judy Dench and Kieran Hines. Kieran Hines is like one of my all time favorites. He was, um, the, the, what's it, whatchamacallit, not the king in the North, but he was the leader of the, um, of the nut, nuts who lived above the wall. Oh, see, see, see. Um, so he's really great. Cast is great. Jamie Dornan, who I normally find very annoying was great. It was like two thumbs up for us. Um, and then licorice pizza, which Ew. was um, divided in our household. Wh and which way did you roll? Which way I was did a, you? Swim? I was a no. And Good. I don't mean to like spoiler alert this, but maybe spo turn no. off for the next minute. No, like spoil away. Okay, the fact that the entire thing hinged around a relationship between a twenty-five-year-old woman and this fifteen-year-old boy. What? No 25-year-old no. woman, unless she is deeply deranged, wants to, like, and I get that it was complicated and whatever, but nobody is uh, nobody is sexually attracted to a 15-year-old boy, I'm sorry, unless there is something loco in the cabeza. Yeah. yeah. And, like, she was a hot piece of ass, and nobody, like, she didn't need to be into some rando 15-year-old, and, like, everybody totally normalized it. If this was a movie where the genders were reversed... People would be like, no fucking way. In this time, in this climate, no yeah, way. Yeah, no fucking way. No way. And so I was like, I feel like, I feel like it's kind of icky that we're giving it a pass because the genders are swapped. It's still icky. It's still, listen, me and my friends have no desire to ever watch that movie. Like none. <laughs> and the fact that it's up for best movie Discuss me. And now that I know that that's part of it too, worse. Like there's yeah. there's no desire. Like enough. Enough of this shit. So, no. I will um, tell you the good points. Okay. The acting was great. And there Oscar was Oscar worthy ask acting? No. I don't know that either Boom. of the leads are nominated for Oscars. No. They, like he's a kid. He's Philip Seymour Hoffman's kid. Oh shit. And I it's didn't like know his that. first, yeah, it's his first real role. In and the she is the lead singer of Hame. Hame. They yeah. suck. And they yeah, suck. And King I'm not just anyway. an old person talking about like I never got it. A lot of never my friends got never got it. Yeah. Um, and they had really great cameos for people who like uh what's his name? Tom um, Waits, Bradley Cooper. It, Bradley Cooper, that's who I hear every time. Yeah, he was funny. There. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, why why did why do you and your peeps not want to watch it? I have no desire. I don't want to watch a story uh uh about this white chick and this white boy doing stupid. Like I don't care. It doesn't yeah. nothing <laughs> appeals to me. Um I don't like Haim. The only thing the positive cuz I'm not a complete hater, the posit the one thing I will say about Haim is they gave a platform to Lizzo. They had Lizzo open up for them on tour and that's how she gained uh, oh. extra exposure so i will give them that okay um but yeah no um power of the dog i didn't i watched but i fast forwarded because i already knew what the what had <laughs> happened by listening to 
uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and the guy who plays the brother from Friday Night uh, yeah. Lights. Uh, Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons. They were both on uh, uh, WTF with Mark Marin, and they were uh-huh. talking about it. They're like, this is going to be spoiler. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I'll have time to watch it, but let's see. Uh-huh. So I knew what was happening. And then my good friends were like, oh, yeah, it's really good. You should watch it. Da, da, da. But I already knew. So I was like, well, now it's nominated for shit. I got to watch it. But I fast forwarded because I already knew what was happening. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I could see this. I could see this. But do we know what Sam Elliott just said about it? No. So I didn't finish that, which is funny because it was Monday. Monday, uh, we had some family, friends and family come into town. We went to um, Joshua Tree. So that's about an hour and 15 minutes, the national park, an hour and 15 minutes drive. So I was listening, you know, the Supernatural Bear was listening, has headphones on. So I'm listening to WTF and it's Sam Elliott. Who doesn't love Sam Elliott? Who doesn't love that voice? Yeah. Okay. Mark Marin loves Sam Elliott. So he prefaced that. Da, da, da. But I don't think he knew at the time that it was going to go viral. Uh, what he was saying but I noticed I didn't get to that part yet so I was like halfway through the episode and I was like I mean I cuss a lot right I cuss a lot like all the episodes are explicit on here um but shit I've heard Sam Elliott in interviews before I don't know if he's going through something or what he was saying fuck and motherfuck every other word uh-huh. which was weird to me right uh-huh. Like I was like, and I was thinking as I'm driving, I was like, is he trying to impress Mark Marin because his podcast is called What the Fuck, you know, WTF or like, I didn't understand the dynamic. But then I guess, he, I don't know, he's going through something because this is what he said uh, when they, when he mentioned, uh, when Mark Marin mentioned, um, you know, Power of the Dog. He's like, what, what does this woman from down there, New Zealand, know about the American West? And why did she shoot this movie in New Zealand and call it Montana and say, this is the way it was. It wronged me. It rubbed me the wrong way, pal. Does he know that he works in movies? <laughs> That's what everybody was saying. He was like, I mean, he, I will tell you that that the Ranger Ted was really annoyed. He was like, this doesn't look like Montana at all. <laughs> but whatever. It's called the movies. It's called the movies because he's doing that show 18 something. Yeah. And, and he's in Texas and he's like. He's like, where I was hanging out with families, not men, but families, big, long, extended, multiple generations of families that made their living and their lives were all about being cowboys. Um, He's like, they're all, he's like, power of the dog. They're all running around in chaps and no shirts. They're all these uh, allusions to homosexuality throughout the the fucking movie. And then, I mean, (laughs) that's what, and then I think Mark Maron, I think I heard them say that Mark Maron was like, but that's what the movie's about. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, dude. I don't know where this comes from. Like, he was literally, every other word was fucking this and motherfucking that and da-da-da. And then he goes on this. It's like viral. It's all over my my feed, <laughs> you know? And and that's what people are saying. Like, do they? does he not know? Is he movie? Like, it's sets, dude. Like, you don't naturally you know, always film. So anyways, I don't know. Um... <laughs> It's it's crazy. Okay, so what? How many of the best picture not um, nominees have you seen? Um, you kindly included a list, a link to a list. I've seen Don't Look Up, Dune, Belfast, Licorice Pizza, Power of the Dog. I have not seen Coda, King Richard, West Side Story, Nightmare Alley, or Drive My Car. What about you? I've for this I've only seen uh Don't Look Up, Dune, King Richard, Power of the Dog. But before the show, I before I want to see Belfast, Coda and Drive My Car. Yeah. What did you think about King Richard? I thought it was I thought it was really good, interesting story. I didn't know um that story about him. You know, I don't I don't know if it deserves best picture. I think I haven't seen Belfast, but I think maybe it might be between Belfast and Dune. <laughs> and maybe I don't even know why Don't Look Up is on, on there. Yeah, Don't Look Up was uh, the first half of it was entertaining. The rest of it. I don't know. I'm like thinking best picture. Nah. I'm thinking it's Power of the Dog and Belfast. Okay. All right. 
man, I, sh- I should be Dune. I love Dune so much. But Me too. People were saying like, oh, maybe he'll get like more awards attention for the second one. Maybe. Uh, maybe. That's what they did with the Lord of the Rings movies. Like the first two didn't get shit. And then the third one cleaned up. And they're saying that uh, the the best actor is kind of like but best actor and best actress are pretty stacked up. But that maybe for best actor, they'll give it to Will Smith. Like, you know, when they yeah. give it to them, like, yeah. oh, because you deserve it. You've done all here's these your, other things. Here's your consolation prize. Yeah, like maybe. So I don't know, but it'll be interesting. But yeah, I want to see um, when is drive, the, drive My Car. When is the ceremony? The ceremony is... God, that ceremony was a train wreck last, last year. Holy shit. Was it last year? The one that was like... Yeah, that the one at the union using union yeah, station. Yeah, what the fuck was happening there? It's on uh, March twenty seventh. Okay, I got a little while. So we got time. We can do okay. it. Okay. We can do it. Like at least you know I, I've seen some of the things that people are in nominated for like best actor and stuff. But I want to get. We can get a couple in. Yeah, totally. Um, and speaking of nominations, if you listen to Word to Your Mama episode twenty three with Joseph Jasbo Patel, he is the a producer of the Oscar nominated for best documentary Summer of Soul or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, that is Quest Love's directorial debut. Uh we're beginning of March, but in February, when the uh you know the the nominations come out, he's like, I I don't think I'll be able to sleep the night before. Cause I a year prior, their movie had just come out at Sundance. It hadn't even been bought by a studio or anything. And when and it opened Sundance and all this stuff, and I got, I got, I was honored enough to be able to see it there. And when I saw it, I was like, "Get your fucking outfits ready, dude! You're gonna be, it's gonna be all <laughs> over awards and Oscar." And he's like, "Don't say that." And I was like, "No, no, no!" And so when he got the nomination, everyone was going crazy. I was like, "I told you, I told you!" And it, it's amazing. I think they'll take it. But if you haven't watched it, watch it. And then if you haven't, after you watch it, listen to that episode because he gives awesome, you know, BTS about his experience and how he became attached to that. I was some I don't even know how this happened. Somehow I maybe we we're just like flipping through channels. How, does, how do I even flip through channels? You know what it was? We were in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And um, we were watching something. This is a few weeks ago. And it was like, what is that? And I was like, after five minutes, I was like, I know what this is. <laughs> and I was like, this has been on the list of things I want to see. And so I watched like the last third of it and it was great. But awesome. now I need to go back and watch the whole thing. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah. So recommend. Okay. So let's get into books. Books. I, you know, I said in our last episode that I was going to like really bring my book game, um, in sort of a a pathetic and very modest way. (laughs) So, um, I just, I finished Lore Olympus last month, which is a graphic novel about the Greek gods. Very enjoyable. Um, somebody, Newsweek, NPR, said it was like a, a YA book of the year. So yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like I'm a real trendsetter. <laughs> and the second book I just read is called Wilder Girls, and it's a young adult book as well. Um, it was <laughs> I read a review where it was described as sapphic horror. What which does that I, mean? I mean lesbian horror. Oh, <laughs> Um, and I was like, who doesn't love lesbian horror? I don't know that that's the, those, those are the words I would use to describe it, but there is definitely a lesbian and, and, you know, let Sam Elliott know that before he starts reading it, there is a, you know, two of the girls are lesbians, um, but it's sort of a dystopian, dystopian pandemic, weird book. Um, it's a couple years old, so I read that. I liked it very much. And now I am reading a book called The Big Burn, which is about um, which is about the largest um, the largest forest fire in North American history. Oh shit. Yeah. When did that go down? Um, that went down about 120, just shy of 120 years ago. And part of the repercussions of that, Teddy Roosevelt was the president and it was what spurred him to create the national park system. Mm. So, um, this like big crazy fire, which burned through Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, uh, like a massive mega fire prompted him to want to save more of the outdoor spaces 
And so it's a story about him and I think his like secretary of the interior and during the fire and all that sort of stuff. It's supposed to be great. So um, I just am starting that right now. What about you? Nice. Um, so I forgot to, I don't think I mentioned last time I've had finished a, a highly recommended book. It's called For Brown Girls with Sharp Edges and Tender Hearts, A Love Letter to Women of Color by Prisca Dor- Dorcas Mojica Rodriguez. Um, and if I did, I'm sorry, but I recommend it. It's, um, she no, tells, first she, time. she's an academic, um, immigrant, and she talks about ideas and concepts via her own story. And I love it being a, a, a Latina Mexican girl that, especially when I was young, I was dark. And the colorism and the the connection and, that we have to... Um, you know, religion, how uh, white supremacy just kind of permeates all the different facets of our lives, the patriarchy. It's just, um, I didn't know that I was going to like it as much and it was going to be so impactful. And then I've recommended it and heard other women of color that have read it and they're just like, yo. And I was like, I know, like you see yourself, you hear yourself, you you could relate on so many levels of your family and you're just like, shit, you know? And then also to see how she's, how she's fighting against that by saying like, oh no, I'm not going to change my name. This is my entire name and this is how I'm going to list it. And this is how you're going to say it. And the da, 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 you know, and I'm going to wear lipstick and heels and I'm going to do all this shit and go to the church. And so, I don't know, it's very empowering. Um, I listen to it because I can get more shit done, but also because she read it and you could mm-hmm. tell when she's rereading parts of it that it's, you know, it's kind of hard for her too. So I recommend that. And then right now, currently I'm reading Atlas of the Heart, Mapping Meaningful Connection and the Language of Human Experiences by our girl that we fucks with heavy, Brené Brown. Um, <laughs> and so the book came out and it's really big and I heard her and her sisters talk about it um, and how they worked with uh, you know, artist that does like graphics and is kind of different from something she's done before. So, but I was like, man, I, I want to listen to her because I love her voice. I know. You know, yeah, she does too. a great job. It's just like she's talking to you, right? But it wasn't out yet, the the audio. So it finally came out. Now I'm listening to it. And she's dope enough to say, to give you the whole book as a PDF. So you could see the way it was intended. There's also like worksheets part of it. And then, and then also all the graphics. And she was like, I don't want to leave you out because that's how it was meant to be experienced. So I appreciate that. And I'm only a couple of chapters in, but it's always fucking, Oh, what? Oh yes, of course. (laughs) Oh, that's great. I will check that out. And I also added for Brown girls with sharp edges and tender hearts to my to read list on Goodreads. Yes. And, 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 you know, it's not just for the brown girls. Oh, you know, I, it, I want, ev- especially, this is who I want to read it. All the brown girls, you know, read it. The You know, especially if you're, you know, uh, Latina, Latinx, read it. Also, white passing, especially the white passing Latina mm, chicks. Mm-hmm. Read the shit so you understand what the fuck happens and what we go through. And then non, you know, people of color should read this because she talks about, um, you know, people coming when she was a kid coming to her country and and she calls it, um, I forget what she calls it, Um, but just how that's violent, how you think you're going to go over there and like missionaries or do that type of work and how that's violent and how that's fucked up and how you think you're a good person because you're doing things like that. And, and, And she really goes deep into that. And I forget what she calls it, something tourism. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, not ecotourism, but some fucked up type of tourism. Do-gooding tourism. Yeah. And, 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 and I was like, man, I was like, that's, this book would be great for a lot of people to, you know, it's not, it, it, it's nonfiction, but it breaks down things. Also, what I really like about her is she'll introduce concepts um, and she'll give credit to who brought up those concepts in in academia, right? So if it was like. Uh, Such and such who's from, you know, who's a black LGBTQ plus, you know, academic that came from that. And she really gives 
um, credit to those who have been her mentors or those that she has read and has really impacted her. So I, I like that. You know, she's not like, these are my thoughts and my views and what I came up with when I was, I was an academic. She, I mean, she went to school for theology, so she knows. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's very interesting, and I feel like it, it could open a lot of people's eyes, but especially being Mexican being, you know, Latina opened up our own eyes to the fucked upness that we do to ourselves. If uh-huh. that makes sense. So I would, I can't wait for you to read it, T.I. And we'll de- definitely go a deep dive discussion. Great. I look forward to that as well. Dope. Okay. Anything else? No, this was, this was like concise. We covered a lot of stuff and a lot of really good stuff. Um, one thing I want to add, I don't think that you're on Goodreads. Are you on Goodreads? Okay. Mm -hmm. If anyone out there is on Goodreads, let me know. We'll be friends. (laughs) I love my Goodread friends. Um, it's so like, I get a, you know, weekly email. that's like, Oh, Jan read this one and Jeannie read this and Shay just started reading that. And I'm like, Oh, this is wonderful to know. Oh, I didn't know that that's what that was. That's yeah, how yeah. that works. You can you can track all of your books and see like book reviews and things like that. Um, reviews by users. Um, but then you can also like network with your friends, see what your friends are reading. And, and oh. that I love that function. Yeah. So oh, I didn't know. I thought it was just like they just had book reviews. That's why I go there for. But I didn't know you could have a profile and see what your friends are oh, doing. Yes. Maybe I might oh, do that. Yes. Maybe mm-hmm. I might do that. And then you can also use it like when you see a book, you can click like want to read. And then it like works on a like sort of wish list for wanting to read. So whenever you're like, what am I going to read next? And you can go there and be like, oh, one of these guys. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty so great. You, so you use Notion, right? Um, I am still learning notion. So I just started using it and I bet you, you could bring in your, uh, your personal page for it. Cause I just started my personal page. You could probably bring in your Goodreads up in there. Shit. We need to like, maybe next time we need to talk notion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, then. That's peace, it for me. Oh, peace I'm sorry. Out there. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, that's it for me, everybody. I hope that you're doing well. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, then. Peace okay. out, nerds. <laughs>